God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Welcome to this service of worship. We're glad that you're with us. Merry Christmas. And let us worship together. Let's further prepare for worship, making use of the questions that are before you. Let us together worship, making use of our Advent wreath and the liturgy that is before you. How can we welcome hope in songs and prayers and gifts given and gifts received and help offered in comparison and compassion practice in the word of God made flesh? How can we welcome hope? Set aside wars, grudges, selfish pride, and the need to be right all the time. We forgive one another 70 times 7. We remember each other and the God who made us. On this Christmas Eve, let us light a candle to welcome hope. Let us sing together.
Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, even the coming magi all had to adjust their plans, change direction to accommodate the blessings that God was offering. We must admit the ways we resist allowing God to do this with us. Let us begin with silent prayer. Holy God, when we ate the fruit in the Garden of Eden, when we made the golden calf, when we tried to replace you as king in our lives, when we ignored all the signs that Jesus was coming, <laughs> you met us where we are and redeemed us anyway. We rarely want to return the favor. Help us reach for where you are. Let generosity, love, a sense for what's right, and compassion when things go wrong rule over us. May we truly make room in our lives for the Christ child to enter in. Help us, please, do better with this. Gratefully, we pray this. Thank you for listening, God. Amen. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Jesus is born. Listen for the word of God to us all. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their, shepherd, their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in the heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The word of the Lord. Thanks 
be to God. There's nothing like arriving. When you're on a long trip and you finally get out of the car, stretch your legs and take your bags out, you get to enter your room or the house or your, or your destination, the, the hotel, and you stay for a while. You've arrived. You know, first it was school, but then you had to make contacts with people in the industry through internships. Then the job offer comes and it's just what you've been working toward and all the years of hard work have finally paid off. You've arrived. You know, how long? How long has the family been waiting on that new addition? After all the interviews, paperwork, crazy audits of your finances and background checks, the adoption agency finally approved your application and matched you with a child. You're finally going to meet your new daughter. You have arrived. Imagine the work involved in a dream that took 36 years to realize. And that's in no small part thanks to Lionel Messi's efforts. Argentina won the World Cup. They have arrived. You know, more than two years ago, I was diagnosed with Charcot syndrome. And, per, and that precipitated um, the need to have hardware installed in my right foot. This meant months of not driving, not walking, not being of use, at least the way I wanted. It meant months in a crow boot and then broken hardware and more surgery and more recovery and more crow boot. It, it meant dashed hopes that I would ever get to go hiking again or even running. Then the orthopedist treating me let me know last week that I would possibly be in regular shoes in three months. I have arrived. You know, whether you're talking about a move, a goal, a passion, arriving is one of those parts of the human experience without rival. And yet arriving is not always good. Sometimes we go through wrenching experiences um, or, or frog in the skillet experiences and wonder, how did we get here? How did we arrive? I mean, don't you imagine that the shepherds thought that? There they are watching the sheep. It was an, a night like most others. Maybe a few of them actually wanted to be shepherds, but don't you imagine some of them wanted to do something else with their lives? Don't you imagine some of them were in it because it's what their family had always done, so why not? Don't you imagine some of them had tried their hand at another career and this is where they landed to keep food on the table. They weren't kings. They weren't Pharisees. They weren't even tax collectors. They barely ate better than the sheep they were watching. They had definitely not arrived. But then the angels sang. Christ has arrived. Suddenly the shepherds are catapulted into the most important position of power ever. Receiving God's gift and then telling people about it. They arrived after all. And look, take Mary and Joseph. Their paths were winding and heart-wrenching from the incredulous disdain they were bound to have experienced from their com communities to the prospect that the huge responsibility given to them was about to take concrete shape in a space meant to feed and house animals. All of that had to feel like they had not arrived. They were working for God, after all. I mean, shouldn't there be a little more benefit coming their way? But then Jesus arrives. And with him, the shepherds, all of it, confirming that Mary and Joseph weren't the only ones in the know. This was really happening. They were about to be the people tasked with raising Jesus, the Christ. They had arrived, after all. Well, what about you? As we think of our various journeys, both in and out of faith, as we think about the various ways that we feel about the various ways that we have not arrived, what do we do with the nativity? Now, for those of you who might limit your church visits to Easter or Christmas, um, let, me, let me let you in on a secret. Even frequent flyers 
get this one wrong. God is constantly trying to arrive with us. Whether it's a comment, comment, a thought, a plan, an action, a reaction, God is trying to be a part of our lives. But this isn't just to enhance our life experience. This, is, this isn't just so that we're in a position to, to get more stuff. This isn't so that the world can get shaped by the way we think it should be. God is trying to partner with us because we were made for it. That emptiness that you might feel, that hollow feeling that's enveloping you, that sense of not being complete, God really is the answer. And Jesus is the way. Jesus really is Emmanuel. Okay, fine. God sent Jesus. God wants to be with us. But so what? What does it matter? What is it all for? Well, it's for hope. God deals in hope. This doesn't mean God only cares about the future. Far from it. I guarantee you that in their parallel sorrows, God used Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus and the shepherds to make sure they were all encouraged. The shepherds were noticed by none other than God and given the first mission with the newborn Christ outside of Mary and Joseph. And, and the Holy Family was given the reassurance that they were in the right place and God had not abandoned them. The family and the shepherds were hoping for better. They all got better. What is it that you hope for? Is it better health? A better body? A, a better marriage? Maybe a better relationship with your kids? Are you looking for a better job? A better country? Maybe you're hoping for better pay where you are. Peace? Love? With Christ's arrival, y'all, we get better than any of that. You know, the reason that I can say so is because Christ's arrival comes despite what is coming. Christ's arrival happens whether we believe it or not. Christ's arrival is real even when we aren't being real with each other or ourselves. In other words, hear the good news. God's blessings are not dependent on us. They aren't dependent on us getting it right or meeting some test. God's grace isn't given because we are observing or, or because we are observant or because we're better than, than someone else. Christ arrives because God chooses for that to happen out of God's great love for us. Look, let's be honest. Our quid pro quo world doesn't trust generosity like this. I mean, what's God's agenda? What's the catch? How is that supposed to work? All I can tell you is to ask yourself, did I ask God to send Jesus? No. No. You didn't. None of us did. God chose to do this. Well, that leaves us with two tasks. And whether you're talking about Christmas or any other time of the year, we are always faced with these two tasks. First, we accept God's gift. We make room for God to be in our life, in our decisions, in our choices, in our plans, in our behaviors, in our habits. Make room. Make room for the Christ child in your life. Second, we share God's gift. And we do this principally by being gifts ourselves. I mean, you've heard people say um, they think they're God's gift. And by that, they typically mean that, 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 they typically mean that in a derisive um, or a negative way. But that person is you know, like saying that person is full of themselves, right? But you are God's gift. We are, because we are full of God's Spirit, made possible by the most cosmically important gift God could ever give, God's own self. So this Christmas, this new year, and all the days that may follow, let us remember that we celebrate the birth of Christ, to be sure, but we must celebrate his birth in our hearts. Christ has arrived. My brothers and sisters in Christ, that means we've arrived also. May it be so. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. While we sing, take time to share the light of Christ with all in your home. If you have candles, ensure that everyone has one, and then using the candlelight from your worship table, share the, fire, share the light, candlelight with one another. This Christmas Eve, great God, we acknowledge your great gift and we say thank you. We say thank you for not giving up on us. In fact, thank you for maintaining hopes for us. Thank you for seeing into us and seeing what you made and still being pleased. Help us see what you see, O oh God. Help us harbor what you harbor for us. And as you send the Christ child in the world, above all else, O oh God, help us receive him. Help us receive Christ not only here in this place, but in our hearts, and carry Christ with us wherever we go. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for teaching us even how to pray when words fail us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us together say our benediction. Christ has arrived. That means we've arrived also. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Get up and take heart. Jesus is still calling you. 
And as you go, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds this season, this Christmas Eve, and forevermore. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.